to Cinema Therapy, the podcast for people who know nothing about life, but all about film and television. I am Karen. I'm Nicole. Hello, Nicole. Hi. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. That's right. Yes. Did you s- talk to your mother today? I did. did I hello? FaceTimed my mother. Aww. After. No, before I made a post about it, okay? Mm. I made it a point. I wanted to be intentional. Yeah. I wanted to actually contact my mother before I posted something on social media. Good of you, because a lot of times I do post it on social media without having spoken to my mother. Right. And my mother does not have social media, so I... <laughs> exactly. I'm really just doing it for myself. <laughs> so... It's a thing. What's it's the point? It's part of my brand, you know? I'm a daughter. Yes, it is part <laughs> of your brand. That's so true. Like, Fran Drescher. Like, well, she, like You always have to bring up Fran Drescher. Well, your brand is Asian Fran Drescher, so perfect for this episode that you say that Nicole (laughs) because I am more than an Asian anything (laughs) (laughs) I am myself (laughs) can enjoy (laughs) Pangantion listen how was your weekend (laughs) listen um it was good I went to Connecticut for my brother-in-law's graduation Mm -hmm. uh you know I'm a family woman I'm just you know doing what family expects of me going out to the north east coast this place you know (laughs) where the forest is i never realized how natural like new haven was Mm. where like yale was i had only really gone from like the train station to my brother and sister-in-law's house and then back to the train station it was the first time that i saw that there was this like mountain little region that you could free solo on and there was like (laughs) this all these this forest I don't know it was beautiful I was like wow this is very appealing and I feel like she was like giving me a um advertisement for like living in Connecticut and like having kids and raising a family and no the whole life yeah no, no I I say no as well right now but she did not make a bad presentation it was pretty appealing her house has a lot of space in it and her kids are really cute and she just seems to have like the whole mom thing really down. Um, it's very, you know, that's what you want, Nicole. Um, that's you. <laughs> maybe in like five years. I don't know. Mm. I like to keep my options open. OK, Karen, don't limit me. I'm not limiting you. I'm keeping you You're not <laughs> going to Connecticut. I will no, be not yet. Definitely not yet. I'm not ready for Connecticut. Connecticut can't hold me. I can't be that's managed right. in Connecticut. <laughs> That can't happen. That's not you. No, I'm it's gonna not. tell you right now. It's not you. I know you. I'm just kidding. I'm oh like, oh my god, really hyper right now. You so. are. This is the first time you started <laughs> an episode. You're like, okay, five <laughs> high fives. I'm like, whoa, we gotta warm we up for high show. We gotta come in with the high energy. Okay, you we know gotta I'm make always this hype. performative. This is a podcast. It's not a phone conversation with Karen and Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me today. I don't know either this energy well thank it's you mother's for the day note. energy thank you for the note beyonce it's good for me to know <laughs> you're the one who said at first that this has to be performative and it kind of stuck with me like oh my god after when all did I these say weeks that? i don't know you said it i know ago, i said it and it stuck with me it sounds like something i would say yeah <laughs> so yeah well i'm glad you had a nice weekend yeah how are you i'm great <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I'm great. Too many I feel, caffeine pills. Yeah, I have. I feel like an open wound these days. Like to draw from Mad Men, I feel like a sensitive piece of horse flesh. Which character says this? Um, Pete says that about Don Draper. That is a sensitive piece of horse flesh that should not be. I don't know. Uh, tampered with, like stressed. For, Basically, I'm Don Draper. I just feel very open. I'm experiencing wanting to be open to new connections, new people, new situations. And I feel like everything in my life is pointing me towards that. Mm. Um, Like this week, for example, I started therapy for the first time in like four years. Thank you so much. Yeah, since 2015. (laughs) And so... It's really nice. Um, I'm I'm continuing on camera classes with Heidi Marshall, and it's it's also 
very, yeah, it's, it's just a very opening experience. It's very vulnerable, each class, honestly. That's so your word, these last, like, three weeks. It's, like, vulnerable. I'm very Open. vulnerable. But it's a good vulnerability. And then I feel like Waitress, seeing Waitress with you. Mm-hmm. You know, the song is called Opening Up. Like, oh it's gosh. all about being open it's and It's a cheerful song, but, like, it needs something really much more, like, deep w- once you get to the end of the show. At the first, the beginning of it, I wasn't sure if I was, I was like, this is a lot of, like, hyper, like, happy energy right now, and I don't know what to do with it. And by the end, I was like, yes, like, this song is amazing. Yeah. Um, I feel like Sarah Borelli's songs will do that to you. Like, you think it's just, like, fluff. <laughs> you think it's something, but then it ends up like really sticking with you and making an impression. Yes. Like it's more than just music for Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, agreed. it's a lot. It's I deep. Got a lot of music from Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, real. yeah, it's deep. Yeah. So yeah, today is an episode, um, to talk about Asian Whoa. American Pacific Islander. Heritage Month in film and television. That, there's so it's <laughs> it's it's <laughs> a lot of drama that you brought. Well, it's a mouthful, and I hate presenting the episode as such because I don't I don't want to have to like talk about I don't want to I don't know I have an issue like making an episode about this even though I wanted an episode about this. Can yes. you understand where I'm coming from though? You want it to always be a lot of show movies and tv that we talk about that have like asian representation and asian content is Use that, that what law mean? school education nicole to help me make my point i just feel <laughs> <laughs> you just put me on the motherfucking spot right now because i know you could do it yo you can do it you I did was, it. You did it. That's exactly it. Thank you so much. You didn't tell me that. I was. I <laughs> still felt like I was on the spot. I was like, wait, I got it wrong. And no, you like, got no, it you right. Gotta I, do it. No, I got it. You got it right. So okay, I'm thanking thank you. you. Yeah, I just hate. I don't know. I want to do. I want to be more than Asian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. But I feel like I can't be more than Asian unless I address. <laughs> that I'm Asian. I hate that you're like trying to make me put words in your mouth <laughs> because that's inappropriate. I can't you're speak right. to your experience. <laughs> <laughs> but you just know me. You know me. So I'll just say as a friend that you have come to me many times and have expressed frustration <laughs> and feeling like every time you come to a role, you have to come to it with like my Asian experience, like like Amazing. that history. Oh my god. And you feel like that is just a segment of your experience. You've had experiences that come from your identity as a woman, your identity as an actress, like so many things. So you just want to feel like you can come to any role and bring all of your different experiences to that and not feel like it's just about your being Asian. Look at that. That's, you did that's it. What I've heard, you did okay? it. You did it. But I am not Thank saying you. that's exactly your thoughts. Yeah. I'm just trying. <laughs> well, so this is an episode to talk about or to celebrate um, works of those from the Asian American experience, but not necessarily works that are all about the Asian mm-hmm. experience. Okay. Does that make sense? So it's to me. So the title is TBD because I don't know what to call this because I'm not calling it Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> that is, a, I, I just feel like we can come up with something a little bit more fun and, you know, ours. But like, you know, let's see what the episode takes us. Like we might find a little clip from one of our guests that like. Oh makes my us- God. Yes. That's a great segue <laughs> into introducing our company we've got company all right it's not just us we have two lovely guests lee hubia and christina bustos thank you so much for being here ladies hello thank you for having us here hi we just spoke at the same time was that nice i know yeah it sounded like harmony yeah thank you you. yeah lee was the alto christina was soprano it was really cute yeah 
Um, I, I asked both of these women to be here today because um, I feel like they have a lot to contribute uh, to today's episode. I met Christina doing a production of Ray's Panay in 2016 2016. and it's a production that raises funds for this organization called Roots of Health which um, supports sex education, sex awareness and health care to women in Palawan in the Philippines um, in a production that is original work comprised of Panay women talking about their experience and yeah that's how I know her. She also is a co-creator, or a creator, host of her own podcast called Banana Ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's That's very cute, it's cute right? I like that name. Yeah, it's Love a play on the... Fun. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Shout out. Mm-hmm. Possible sponsorship. No, just <laughs> yeah, get that sponsorship. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what this is for. Yes. Um, it's not launched yet, but I'm working on it um, um, soon to be launched. Okay. So, yeah. Look out for that, guys. Yeah. Awesome. Lee Hubia, I feel like, is such an essential part of, like, my life as an artist. Um, She's been there for many different things in different areas. And I feel like we share a very common, similar perspective on being an Asian woman in the industry Mm. and wanting to, like, fight. Uh, just like this, like ongoing energy of like t- of like feeling like that's all we are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we met on <laughs> Journey of a Brown Girl. Another, yes. f- yeah, back in two thousand fourteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was a very um, intense experience. Mm. Um, just like life wise, and also like artistically, the work. But oof, these girls were going through it. Yeah. Again, a show about Filipino women. I love it. <laughs> you do? I mean, I haven't seen the show, but I love the <laughs> concept. Oh, well, I like that you like the concept. Yes. Because I'm all about, like, I want to learn about culture and, like, that, that independent struggle. And I feel like, I don't know, with Asian American Pacific Islander, I feel like I didn't see that whole term until I saw it on your bumper, like dad's bumper sticker (laughs) on his Hummer. Um, And I feel like the Pacific Islander part really gets forgotten. Like there's like an experience there that's really (laughs) specific and beautiful that needs to be discussed. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. That says the token black person in this group. (laughs) Well, I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Lee is also a director, writer, dancer, actor, um, improv extraordinaire. And Lee did the Asian American Film Lab's 72-hour 72, 72 shootout twice with yes. two films called Almond Milk and Those Who Wander. Yes, I did. What was your... <laughs> was in both of them. She was there. Wow. Yes, I was in both Colleagues, of them. co-stars. She casted me as the toxic friend. Oh. <laughs> she knows me. She really does. She what? did really great. <laughs> <laughs> did you know she could get there? Like, you, you understand the concept. I had a feeling, but truly, she really brought it. She kind of you know, even surprised me in a great way. I mean, because those things were so crazy, and really, Karen just showed up and brought herself and something unique to it, and I was so grateful. I mean, that's why... She's the girl. I know she'll bring something. Oh, yes. Well, thank you, girl. Yep. Um, Lee for the second film uh, was both the writer was the writer, producer, director, and actor for that uh, project. Is that correct? Yes, it is correct. It's and so, list. what was that experience like? Wearing all those hats, oh, those girl. many hats. It was hard. It was a lot. I mean, making a film in 72 hours is already, like, impossible. Um, and so you're pushing yourself. And then so – but I felt like I had took on all those things out of sort of just, like, a necessity. Like, because mm-hmm. who's going to do it? You know, I have to do it. I yeah. ended up being the director because, like, who else am I going to get to direct the story that I wrote in, like, a couple hours with my friend? You know, I don't have time to then relay that message. And in that, you know, it's, it's all just going to come through me anyway. It's sort of the most efficient way. Um, and it was difficult, but it was – it's very challenging and I learned a lot. But you know, I was 
in that experience in particular, I was very like pleasantly surprised and like proud of myself actually. Not actually like, you know, but like, you know, for the first experience it was more positive and like empowering of like, oh yeah, we, you know, when you have to do it because there's no one else, like if you trust yourself, you can show up. What made that time crunch? It's, I mean, like, why is it 72 hours? Yeah. Oh, that's, like, part of the, the festival. Like, oh. everyone is given a prompt mm-hmm. on the Thursday night, and okay. then you have from Thursday to Sunday night to write, shoot, and edit a five-minute film. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Are there a lot of film festivals like that where they have, like, prompts or uh, short? I, I really have no, I'm showing my ignorance in this, <laughs> but um, where they have, like, a time limit. Yeah, there are a couple. Yeah, there are a couple that are like that. And it's kind of nice because it, you know, everyone's like creating and trying to make their stuff. But mm-hmm. then, so the way, you know, the way that I got the opportunity to do this was I just sort of like committed. I was like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I'm going to ask these people mm-hmm. and they're down and they're going to commit to me and that weekend. And you all just show, you know, you just devote those 72 hours, mm-hmm. which it all just like forces you mm-hmm. to like give birth to something before yeah. you're ready, basically. Speaking of Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it just like sort of forces your hand. Like you have to be okay with the choices that you make because like you don't have time to think about another one and that's it's, so true it's it's an and i um don't know if i'll do it again to be honest because it was a lot of stress she did not sleep mm. at yeah. all but you know but t- it, it, it's a good experience and a good challenge i learned so much i would encourage people to do things like that to to sort of try yeah, just to see what you're capable of yeah see where you can be pushed that's exactly. really that's really cool yeah if i I'm recalling accurately. Uh, you were there for the whole editing process too. Like you would just mm-hmm. go straight from like acting and then like spending the next 24 hours just editing with Moon Culture, correct? Yes. Yeah. That was and that was that was the thing, right? Because then the way that the, I think the way films are made, which is great, it, the process is divided up amongst the responsibilities are divided amongst a lot of people. You know, you're your director, you have your AD, there's a producer, there's a cinematographer, then there's the editors, then there's the writers, and then there's actors. And so it's like everyone can just worry about their job mm-hmm. and be the head of their own department. But like when, uh, you know, in that instance, I'm just like the head of all the departments, and it's just, but then you don't really get to see what the other side is like. And then in that um, experience, I learned how to do my job primarily, which is what, what I'm pursuing at the moment, which mm. is like an actor, is oh, how can I do my job better to benefit everyone in all these other positions? I'd never been in an editing room before, and I was like, oh, damn. This is, again, showing my ignorance. I was like, oh, this is where the move is made. Mm-hmm. Like, this is where the decisions are made. Like, oh, if I'm not giving the editor options when I'm acting, then, like, hmm, that's not helpful. Mm-hmm. Or, like, being an actor and like, oh, right, if I don't have a good clear line or trajectory or, like, wants or needs as a character, then, then it's hard for me to jump into this. So I realized, like, oh, right, that's what a writer does. Mm-hmm. And the same thing, mm-hmm. direct, you know, I'm just, by having to be a part of all of those things, I'm like, oh, okay, this is helps me just, like, learn about everyone's job and how much it takes to make a story come to life makes you appreciate and appreciate everybody and all that they do and yeah for sure i feel like you have to have if there's anyone who could do that it's lee she has like she's a virgo so she has that beyonce energy girl double cap you know (laughs) yeah Yeah. cap rising and cap moon there's a lot of I know That's she wants to get it. <laughs> it's very intimidating. So, yeah. Don't be, you know, this. Don't let the vocal fry fool you. <laughs> I am very intense. <laughs> I feel like your vocal fry is like I don't give a shit, you know, which is yeah. intimidating. Oh, okay. At the end of the day, but I love everyone. I know you do. You really do. <laughs> but I also feel like um, because you had. Like, you have experience in all those roles. And, Christina, you being part of Raise Panay, like, having control or, like, writing your material and what you share contributes to you controlling the narrative of how, back to being Asian, being uh, Asian are portrayed in the media. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to have power over our narrative. And I guess that's how you do it. Playing all these different roles, all these hats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can I say one thing that I just thought of? Please. Um, I didn't even realize that, but yeah, like have 
um, something that I think to relate back to what Miss Karen is going through about trying to find a title for this episode because <laughs> it's hard. But you know, I also made the decision of like I'm not going to address like my Asianness actually in yeah. my, any of my things. Mm-hmm. Like there was no talk, and like they give you a theme and those are prompts. And for some of the other films that was like openly addressed mm-hmm. about it about being race and identity and Asian American experiences, which is fine. But f- and this is just a personal choice of like the stories yeah. that I like to tell. There's nothing wrong with other ones, but. I felt as if just like by being an Asian American in this role telling this story that also has power and that's sort of like by not acknowledging it um, in a in a more direct way like overtly mm. and saying you know like one of them was lose the labels and mm. so and uh, that was almond milk and so you know that could be taken very many you know th- lots of different ways but because I love that this is like giving a platform for Asian Americans like I, you know, you can do anything. Mm-hmm. I don't have to, uh, you know, I'm sure we all know what it's like to be the minority in the room having to explain, like, what your experience, like, is to people mm-hmm. and trying to teach them how to approach you. But, yeah. like, now you can just be a storyteller. Mm-hmm. Tell yeah. whatever story. Mm-hmm. And it is an Asian American story because I am one. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a great way of putting it. Christina. Oh. Yes. You are <laughs> a journalist who has experience in publications with Essence Magazine, The Riveter, Pace Magazine, and Digital Spy. Yeah. Can you talk to us about some of your work that has been um, published? Yeah, sure. Um, I When I moved to New York about 10 years ago, I was mostly writing um, fashion. And then mm. um, that was most of... Um, I think I, I, it was just through connection. I connected with um, a, an ed- a fashion editor here, and most of the freelance work that she was giving me um, was basically fashion. And I didn't, and then I kind of segued away into entertainment with my um, freelance work with Digital Spy. And then that's when I um, got in, and then the Riveter um, magazine, which is a small independent magazine based in Minneapolis, a friend of mine, or a college friend of mine, um, hit me up and said like yo we're looking for a fashion um writer would you want to contribute and i was like yeah sure absolutely and then um it being that's how i started with the rivet my relationship with the riveter um magazine and it being a woman publication i was like well this is also another way for me to experience uh, experiment with what or explore Mm -hmm. um other writing um stories and that's when i started to highlight women a woman women of color um, mostly and and also like bringing everything that I I love like the, um, w- in entertainment you know covering pop culture so I, w- I did a lot of like at the time it was a lot of like think pieces mm-hmm. um, that were very popular um, w- in entertainment like oh Miley Cyrus twerking what does that mean mm-hmm. like those were like those little think pieces in there and so like I got into that and I was just and then I moved into um, profiling um, a lot of women of color, especially um, Asian American and, and specifically Filipino American, and I've been—it's been a rewarding experience for the last um, three years to be interviewing fellow Filipino Americans from Nicole Mashali, um, mm-hmm. a, a mm-hmm. mutual friend of ours, also an act, um, well, a uh, Renaissance woman, basically, um, <laughs> um, actress, director, all of that, um, producer, and then Nicole Poseca, who um, d- um, owns Jipney and Maharlika, mm-hmm. um, Yana Gilbuena, who does the Salo series, um, who has the book out called No Forks Given, um, and then recently, um, I um, it's not published yet, so maybe I don't know if I should be talking about it, but I interviewed um, two Filipino martial art, art um, Filipino martial artists, instructors, women, um, through here in New York and in LA, so i given been able to have those opportunities to just highlight and elevate Asian American specifically Filipino American stories that don't really get a lot of it yeah, yeah. um intention um and also I'm just kind of I'm I feel very grateful to have platforms because there's not a lot mm-hmm. of um, platforms out there who would want to approve a, a pitch of mine or a story of mine so a lot of the stories that I do is I pitch them and mm. so it's also um, my intention you know they're not like coming to me and be like oh can you write this it's like me no I want to write about this person let me see what publications out there are interested um, so I've been lucky to be able to have publication or editors say yes to me to write these stories very yeah. cool I feel like when 
writers like you share stories on Asians doing or having these different roles, it leads to people seeing them differently in film and television. You just see them doing different things, like mm -hmm. more and more diversity in how they're portrayed, which is very important. It's yeah. all connected, I feel. So, Nicole, when, when I presented this episode to you and wanting to do this episode, one of your first suggestions was Master of None. I was about to say Master of Disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who was in that movie? It was an SNL so, character, yeah, right? Yeah, Dana. Uh, Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey. Oh yes. Yeah. Turtle, 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 turtle. I remember turtle. Was, that was part of the commercial. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see the movie, but. It's not good. But. Uh oh. <laughs> That's the hot take. <laughs> <laughs> hot take. But Master of None. Yes. Why did you choose this show? I really love this show, to be honest. I have rewatched it, um, you know, countless times, actually, too many times. I really enjoy Aziz Ansari. Um, I saw a lot of his stand up before the show came out. I enjoyed him on Parks and Recreation. And I was really excited to hear that he was creating a show for Netflix. Um, I feel like Netflix has given a lot of opportunity for people to gr bring original content mm -hmm. and bring unique stories and um the first season i feel is uh, it felt really intimate and personal like it, it felt like he had a lot to say and he seems like such a thoughtful person like he has a lot of um thoughts about like his relationships with people i like that's the feeling i get after like his tour with modern romance and the way that he speaks on his like relationships with women i just feel like he thinks a lot about like how his interactions go um i can't like you know speak about him and not speak about like that article that came out um i can't remember the publication um but there was that sexual assault uh um i mean account basically mm -hmm. that, that went through every, all the details of it um and I don't want to get into it too much because, you know, that's a larger topic and I can speak about that incident a lot. But I feel like he has so much to bring to um, the entertainment industry and I really, like, root for him, honestly. Like, I really mm. want him to continue to be successful with this show because I feel like a lot of the things that he talks about are things I can relate to even though I... I'm not of Indian descent. I, I relate to the immigrant experience. My parents were immigrants. Um, and, you know, in the episodes where he talks about religion, where he talks about um, his parents' experience, I really relate to those episodes. Um, I <laughs> understand having that divide with your parents where they really want you to be successful um, and then you start to reject parts of their identity and they feel like, man like you're rejecting me and I like brought you here and I went through so much to make sure that you would do well and now you're like rejecting my religion you're rejecting the, our way of life and it feels like you're leaving me behind um the, like that parents episode it really hit me that was that was some real shit anyway I was like trying to get you to watch it from the beginning and you were like mm, we'll see yeah <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why I'm like reticent to certain to watching certain things. I'm honestly, I don't know if this is gonna like I'm gonna like show my ass right now, but I'm very hesitant to watch things where I guess it's like the same reason why I was like hesitant to start watching Fresh Off the Boat. They're completely different, mm -hmm. obviously, but there's something in me that. I don't want to watch it because it's so very much about their ethnicity mm -hmm. or like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I did watch Master of None eventually, and I think it's charming. I think it's very charming. And the episodes that you recommended, um, the parents episode, the religion episode, and what was the third one? Indians on TV. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Very effective. I think it's very good writing. Um and I do agree. It brings up a lot of conversation and topics that are not really covered in film and television. And so I do think Master of None is a gem for Netflix and television. And I hope it comes back. 
honestly. Mm -hmm. We don't even know. We really don't. It's just like been radio silence about it. He's started touring again. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that might be a good sign. And and Netflix hasn't said no. But I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. Lee is. Uh. Yeah, come through, Lee. Let us know what you think. I, I went in a hole. I have, uh, <laughs> hmm. Okay. I Okay, so I definitely agree with Karen. Like, I have this thing where I like, I, I, I also felt similarly about Fresh Off the Boat. But when I watch, like, I love the show. I think they're funny. It's one of those things where I'm glad that someone is making this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm glad that it's being made. I'm glad mm-hmm. that it has commercial mainstream success. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that people who are not of Indian or Asian ascent, um, descent, like, enjoy it. I'm glad that they're talking about the things. I'm glad that they're presenting them in such a way that it's, like, really relatable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not going to say, like, it's my favorite mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, it's not a show that I'm like also like dying to be on as an actor or like I mm. if they had a writer's room I want to write for it mm-hmm. but I'm just like glad that it's being done mm. I will <laughs> I will say m- when it was out and I was I mean I, mean, I watched the whole thing mm-hmm. um one of my like just just a pet peeve it didn't stop me from watching it i watched the whole thing i enjoyed it Mm -hmm. um which i just had a little bit of a thing about um dev just kind of i just felt like his character was just the whole thing was just like him trying to prove like what a good guy he was Mm -hmm. which is fine because that is also like i have a feeling also i just feel like that's kind of like aziz's experience you know like real life yeah Yeah, you know like he's like he's like you saying like you think he's a thoughtful person i think so too and that really comes through in like the stories that he chooses to Mm -hmm. highlight on his show and that kind of like also bleeds through in his character a little bit so it's just a little you know you're just kind of like come on man like are you always a good guy like Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, there's like the good guy, the nice guy, mm. the guy who you know is like, I don't want to do that, man. I want to do my own thing, and yeah, which, but like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not mad at it. Again, I'm like, I like, again, I wanted to come back. I want to continue, especially that second season when I just thought visually and like cinematically, mm. they really like took it to a great yes. place. Mm-hmm. So I like really liked where it was going, yeah. especially the second season, because like I was, it's not linear. It's not always just about Dev being like, man, my life is hard. My parents and this white girl, you know? Yeah. Um, and the second season was just so, the universe expanded. And yes. I was like, oh, yeah. this is cool. Like, this is great. And I have yeah. a feeling that's probably like what he was like trying, you know, that's mm-hmm. where he wants, he wants to do that so he can like highlight other experiences. So I'm hoping like that's, you know that get that more of that happens, yeah. and his like co-creator Alan Yang, I think like he's also done a really a lot of really great things, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think that you know it's, I mean it's a, it's a shame, and I hope that we you know, the not this is a random segue, but I also just love the portrayal of his parents. Yeah, I feel like he his might be the first one of like immigrant parents that just like because I mean they're his literal parents mm-hmm. yeah. that did not feel like a caricature not it did you know because no. they're just his real ass parents and I lo- I think they're the best part of that show I love them they're so good yeah. so genuine yes. just so sweet his father is special his dad oh is my the best. Yes. Gosh. <laughs> and like I love the kid that they casted to play his like father as a kid because he just like seemed exactly like the same like oh okay like I guess that's how it is like he just is kind of like seems really loving I'm like I'm not gonna pressure you Dev like you know I'm just here trying to get my iPad fixed (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) because I feel like when you hand an actor like that kind of material like Mm -hmm. or like that writing like it can easily just be so overacted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they're just gonna take it to like this completely ridiculous level, like where almost like they're making fun mm-hmm. of like these characters. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think it was a very smart decision to cast his parents. Yeah, they're yeah they're like also probably my favorite part of the show. They are so so adorable. charming, so charming. Christina, do you watch that show? I only. Th- watched the first season so i can't say much about Mm -hmm. the second season but (laughs) from what lee's saying i kind of want to see all this you know how beautiful it is um i had my i watched it i think what um i it's not my favorite (laughs) i think i'm on but i also have my own hesitate um reason Mm -hmm. for it and now now that you mentioned about him being a good um, like him being a good guy, seeing that, and I had to um, watch the three episodes that you recommended, mm-hmm. and then I'm kind of like seeing it how he he does act like he's the good guy, yeah. 
and everyone else around him are not as woke as he is or not as aware mm-hmm. maybe not as woke but not as aware mm-hmm. um especially with like um the episode um indians on tv yeah where his cousin um, was like, or was that Robbie? Was that his cousin? Or like a friend, a friend was like, yeah. 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 It's um, all like, well, I'll, you know, I'll do the accent, blah, blah, mm. blah. And then he, and then um, I felt like Deb was kind of like shaming him or something. Or um, Aziz's character, Deb, was kind of like, why why would you do an accent? He, he didn't want to take weird, that. Yeah, yeah, he didn't want to, he didn't actually even um, do the accent during that audition part because he, you know, just felt like he was too good for it. Or he didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to do it. Yeah. So I kind of see that angle in it my my thing was um and I, I guess maybe also because of the articles that I was reading about it is um the the love interest mm-hmm. um part of it mm-hmm. um you know mm-hmm. we, we see a lot of um Asian American um men portrayed yes. wanting to only be with white, white women, women. Yeah. <laughs> and like waiting around for the white waiting woman. around more like, but i'm her good friend right why she love right me? that white and, girl, don't you hear um right? you know and then there's all these um and then but then you know they'll do the part of being a good asian um, <laughs> representation and have like other asian women in it but they're like sub character yeah. or like they're kind of like a throwaway character mm. as a plot or a plot point to be with this white female character and I see it, um, you know, like there's one movie called the uh, the Big the Six Big Love, yeah, that's what I was thinking which of, obviously is based on a yeah, based on yeah, a true story. Yeah. But like, you know, but seeing it, I was like, it was still kind of, um, you know, the same thing as Master of None, um, and so that's the one thing that I had a little peeved about. And I also didn't even like the white female character. Mm-hmm. Also, I really so. didn't like her either. So that that's they when I was her, like, let's, yeah, the other thing I felt like like. Yeah, the right like, and they just the way it was written it didn't give her a lot yeah. i mean yeah, i don't maybe, know the yeah. love montage so that was, was another like, thing too cute. i was I'm like love and i'm so quirky right. look at my back yes. Yes. so yes. quirky subtext <laughs> 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 so even i was like well why is she like go find someone else <laughs> you know it never seemed like she was that into him she was just I like oh didn't you're here buy it. and then yeah. 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 i mean spoiler sorry if you watched it but then like at the end i'm like ah uh, <laughs> like cliffhanger at the end of the second season, and I'm like, is that where we're at? Yeah. <laughs> How did we get okay. there? It's 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 just kind of crazy. Um, yeah. That well, the love plot line is not what anyone I think is like you know reeling about when it comes to that show. No. True. Yeah. True. That's not yeah. like what yeah. it's for. Like yeah. all the other things that he's doing are, and like, that's why like the one that won the Emmy mm-hmm. with Lena Waithe, yeah. the parents, the mm-hmm. like representation, like those are the topics that are like. Which is, but then I like just saying that I feel a little conflicted because right like. As an Asian American, like I just want to be in a fucking love story too. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Love. Like, yeah. I, know, like, I get it. I get it, but like I, I get, but then it's one of those things where I don't know. Just because, just I think, just by showing an Asian American going through a love story, love arc, like it doesn't excuse it from not being like it should also be believable and have depth and be complicated and right. feel realistic mm. and feel and be felt you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. just because like oh look there just is a brown person like mm-hmm. great right but, like it, yeah i just don't, I don't it doesn't like lower the level like of what we expect from it yeah i think Fuck, i hope so going back to what you were saying christina about the audition part like he didn't yeah. want to do an accent so he didn't get a job in a film because he refused to do an accent yeah. um for the audition i mean when I watched that, I was like, oh, my God, I've been, like, living I'm sure, wrong yeah, this guys- whole time. Like, I pull out an accent when I'm asked. <laughs> and maybe I don't need to. Maybe that's not. Maybe I need to have some, like, integrity and be like, I'm not going to do an accent. Even though it's in the back pocket. Oh, and I'm it's d- gotten me callbacks. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So, like, I have to be righteous because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. That's a good excuse, though. <laughs> like, I mean, it's against my values. <laughs> yeah, right. Imagine, though. Imagine. Like, nah, I feel weird if I were to do an accent. But it's, like, gotten me callbacks. It's gotten me roles. Yeah. And unfortunately, and that's how it is. That. It is. Yeah. And if you want to work yeah. as an actor. Yeah. Well, I think also there's, like, if you feel, like, I think it's always, what like, you know, at the end of the day, you're the one going to be in the room. You're gonna be the one on camera doing it, so like I think like you would know like this feels like demeaning. Yeah. This feels like totally yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or am I? And I and I. This is how I felt also right about like fresh off the boat. At first, I was like a little irked. I was like, why does only the mom have that crazy accent mm. and everyone else <laughs> speaks perfect yeah. English? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I think I, I don't know if I'm. Yeah, where's the fact checker? But I don't. But like I feel like Constance also might have had an issue with it at first. 
But then, yeah. or also like Greta Lee in that movie Sisters, where she plays the um, the manicurist, and she's got this real thick Korean accent, and she doesn't actually. And I think she also like someone interviewed her for the New York Times, and she had some feelings about it. But those are also just also accurate stories. So it's like, mm. how right. do you feel like there are right. there's what's wrong with having an accent? Like there yeah. are people who have immigrated who still speak with an accent, and that's fine. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. But hopefully the character. That's just like a facet of the character. Like, hopefully, right. it doesn't feel like a joke. Hopefully, mm-hmm. it's just how they speak, just like their hairstyle or what they're wearing. Like, it's just a choice that the actor or the writers are making to put them in that world. And and hopefully, like you know, I mean, this is what I'm telling myself that I'll like be able to know when that feels right and like when it doesn't, when it's actually serving the story, or mm-hmm. when it feels like a punchline, or when it feels just like kind of a cop out. Like, oh, this is just too easy. Like, you know, we just need to make sure they really know that they're from a different place so we'll give them an accent yeah Yeah. i think that's a good point it's like if there's any theft to the character um one of the um show kim's convenience i love oh my god it's on my list i haven't watched it it's on netflix it's It's a canadian Canadian show it's on netflix um i think it's on its third or fourth season Mm or uh, i'll correct man that I Maybe. think it's on third. Well, yeah, like it's already done. Netflix. Oh, yeah, okay, Netflix okay. Series. So they've had more than one <laughs> one yeah. episode, and that's the point of um, you talking about um, accents and immigrant stories. Um, you know, and um, the parents in that film they're Korean American um, Korean immigrants, and and the two um, actors um, who play the parents don't have accents mm-hmm. in real life. And I remember if um, remember the actor, um, the father. Um, the actor who plays the father is saying, like, you know, they they also had their own issues mm-hmm. um, with having an accent, but it's also per- somewhat portraying um, realistically w- um, experience of the immigrant. Ex- you know, they do have accents. Um, as long as there's no, um, I, I think he says that as long as, you know, there, it's not portrayed in a way that it's like The Simpsons, a mm-hmm. pool, you know, where it's yeah. a... It's it's making fun of their experience. It's making fun mm-hmm. of the community. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've se- watched the show, and I think they do such a great portrayal of um, of the parents, um, even you know with the accent. I also yeah. sometimes it throws me off a little bit with the a- hearing the accent, and I, a part of me is like, do they even have to have an accent? Or you know, and then oh, yeah. but then like as I get into the show, I'm like, oh, I. It's almost like the last thing I think about. I think me being just kind of like being more aware mm-hmm. of yeah. you know representation, character, and like wanting solid good um characters of asian american um to see uh, in film and tv it's my first um it's always like i'm has you know i have my own hesitation but then i have to like get in the show to really appreciate it also for what it is and what it's giving yeah it's so hard to judge it from a outside surface level (laughs) yeah yeah, like because with fresh off the boat, I feel like it was getting a lot of criticism based on the name. A lot of people yeah. were like, mm-hmm. "Oh, yeah. that's an offensive name." Blah blah blah. Um, and I think if you just view it in isolation without all the other context that the show is mm-hmm. giving you and all that experience, then of course, like that name seems like a problem. But I feel like if you look at everything else, it's mm-hmm. not. You know, it seems like a joke. Like I don't know. Like it. <laughs> yeah, Eddie Huang. Mm-hmm. I think that's how you say his last name. Uh, who narrate? Who's the narrator of the show? It's based off of his novel, also called Fresh Off yeah. the Boat. I think like him using the word "fresh" isn't mm-hmm. you know like is just like you know like the connotation is very different mm-hmm. by "fresh." He's like he's very influenced by like Fresh Prince of Hip Hop, yeah, mm-hmm. culture, mm-hmm. and yeah. he talks about that a lot on the show. So Constance Wu, um, who's the mom in Fresh Off the Boat. She, this happened recently where <laughs> the seas the show was renewed for the sixth or seventh season. Oh girl, yeah, I and was just on this on Twitter before. Yeah, and I was reading and about it. And she tweeted <laughs> "fuck" <laughs> like that day. She tweeted "fuck," she and then there she also apparently, like on Instagram, disliked the post what? or like some not Instagram. She commented, she on, commented on it and, and was disliked. like disliked yeah. or something. Yeah, about the renewal, and. She came back and was like, that's not what this was about. Like, stop assuming. And you know what? That's fine. We'll let her be. Like, she's a human being. Like, let's not. Have you, you know? read her latest tweet? No. What oh is God. her latest tweet? Yes, bring it. Are the updates <laughs> from, um, her, up, 
from her the own apology? Her, uh, yeah yeah so Did there was like oh. so her initial response was like guys i was just having a bad day like it wasn't it's not about that but then like you also like commented like on the instagram on the really? instagram like yeah. just like yeah but i can she's like they were ill time so i can see how just like saying fuck right after it would be ill time but then commenting on the thing anyway so she was saying guys like I just had a bad day. It's not it. And then she issued this whole thing, this new tweet. I think maybe it was a couple, maybe it was today. It was this whole written out thing that was like, she was really upset because it, since the show was renewed, she had to say no to another project. Mm-hmm. And she really wanted to do the other project, mm-hmm. which was like a challenging, artistic mm-hmm. you know, endeavor that yeah. she was looking forward to taking on. That would be mm-hmm. something new and something different. And um, would be, frankly, she used words like difficult and hard for her, and she likes challenges. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and while, like, you know, she loves Fresh Off the Boat, and she, um, you know, there's nothing against it or whatever, mm-hmm. she um, loves it and everything, but she, it's, like, it's just really easy and it's comfortable, and she just says she recognizes her privilege about mm-hmm. even having options, because a lot of people are just, like, really upset at her just, like, seeming ungrateful where people who are like fans of the show people who are happy that it's back and people are just like you have a job like that's nice mm-hmm. um and all of that stuff and then she also used the words believe women which yeah. oh my god whoa don't know about that but yeah. like but believe so women there's there's a lot hap- there's a lot yeah. happening there and i believe that that was true but mm. i think more so what my takeaway is just like Y'all sometimes need to put the phone down. Mm-hmm. And, like, mm-hmm. why yeah. is the internet, why are you, this is not how you channel emotions. Ariana mm-hmm. Grande as well. I'm yeah, sorry. Th- like, no, I, I'm just true. Been seeing think, with the celebrities that they're just like, blah, blah, blah. Like, wait, what is she wild. doing? People just say things on the internet so fast. I, like, right. oh, Ariana? Yeah. No, she just, like, <laughs> talks shit about um, when Everything. Mac Miller, <laughs> uh, did, like, when he didn't posthumously get the award for in the Grammys, like, who got it? Oh, uh, Cardi B that. for yeah. album of the year she said something like this is some bullshit or something um and yeah like it was just like you don't need to say anything like have yeah. your feelings yeah, have to yourself. Your feelings. Like, feelings. absolutely yeah. not everything needs to be yeah. public anyway that's about two i steps. mean i'm <laughs> all about putting your feelings on the internet but i mean yeah you need it needs to be like done in you got to think about it first you need you need to this like is, she's playing with her money yeah 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 for I'm, sure. I'm, I, I don't know. You can do what you want. All right, Constance Every, Wu. I'm yeah. a fan. <laughs> but, no, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. Constance, Constance if you're listening, I am yeah. a huge fan. We are a huge fan. And, yeah. Huge fans. And, like, uh, let's say you do feel this way where, like, yeah, you don't want to be on Fresh Off the Boat again. Like, I get it. Like, I hope she gets to do – I think she should yeah. be able to do what she, she wants. Yeah. I, if anything, I'm just, like, sad that she had to give up on something she wanted because of this yeah. contract. Yeah. Contract. Yeah. I don't know what like, she gave up. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I mean, it could have been mm-hmm. bad. But I would, <laughs> yeah, we don't know. I just want her to do what she wants. Like, like I'm yeah, sure yeah, 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 it yeah. could be exhausting doing that accent. Like, six, seven years now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, for sure, she had yeah. a taste of doing something different with Crazy, Crazy Rich Asians. Asians yeah. You know? Yeah, with success. Yeah. Just better wings and fly. Yeah. And I think that's what we all want, right? To, like, okay, I'm glad the story's out there. I'm glad these characters are out there. You know, we're seeing, like, let's move on, like, from from that because we're more than that you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, people yeah. and like that's not just asians like that's like i'm sure like women also want like more roles like that yeah. like we're just we're more than than all these barriers that we yeah. have to like fight to prove we are i don't know i you know i appreciate that friends money that sitcom money yeah but <laughs> sure. like mm-hmm. i'm sure it gets tiresome just yeah. like feeling like you're just doing this one character all the time with that accent all the time like it never like decreases in level. I don't know. I also like with the c- accent conversation. I feel like there needs to be levels because like right, right, right. Spe- like there's different levels of a- accents. Anyway, um, but That's yeah, true. like I just feel like she should be able to like push herself and be able to ha- take those roles. And there was like one scene in particular that made me think if like maybe Constance Wu had a problem with this. Um, okay, so. Let me set the stage. Oh God, set the scene. So um, there's an episode where the youngest son, her favorite, um, is uh, developing a relationship with a girl in his class. And I think he might be in, like, elementary school, middle school. Um, and then she, the Constance Wu's character, takes it very badly. <laughs> and in order to, like, manipulate him out of the relationship, like, fakes that he got, like, an A- minus on a test rather than an A. And it's like really like you're gonna do that to your son i just felt like that was kind of like 
enforcing this tiger mom stereotype like you're not letting him have any kind of personal life because you want him to have this like excellence in academia i don't know if y'all have any thoughts on that but i was just like hansa school do you have an issue with this Mm. <laughs> I guess y'all didn't see the episode. I no, 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 I didn't. <laughs> I know, I, but I read. I mean, I, I think. I mean, there's. It's one of those things again, right? Where you're like, well, this is a real story for someone, mm-hmm. and whoever maybe wrote the script yeah. that yeah. was like, well, that was my mom. Mm-hmm. But then there also comes the point where like, do I have to? Do I have? Do I have to be the one to tell that story though? Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. right, right, right. Could, and then that's one of the, that's that's like one of those more like tricky things where you know there's shades of gray and everything, mm-hmm. and there isn't just. But I also feel like that character from the get is just, like, Tiger Mom 100. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. on 100 from the beginning, mm-hmm. always. And yeah. they, like, can't... Re- I mean, they, sometimes I think they relent a little bit and let her show other sides. But, mm. yeah, I don't... Yeah, maybe... I think anyone doing any show like that for that long is people want to venture out and do other things. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Call your agent, you know. Right, exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, instead Don't of Twitter, yeah, instead of yeah. tweeting "fuck," like, you know, yeah, text your agent or text I mean, your I manager. Think it's such a powerful example because, like, she as I'm okay. If I was, you know, Ms. Wu, I'd be like, damn, I have all this influence, I have all this power. Mm. I am, I am a huge part of this show. Mm. I am maybe the the biggest, most recognizable thing of this show. Mm. Can I not like negotiate? You know, like yeah. true. Right, can I, wonder, I try? Yeah. You know, like can I can I push for what I want without feeling like I have to wait on fate and timing to work out? Mm-hmm. Like, is there a way for me to take my own career in my own hands and like control my destiny and all that? I mean, yeah. I know there's so much more to this than that. Of course, I'm sure there's logistics and all that stuff, and you don't always have control. But like, you just wish that you know people could, and I just wish that she could. I feel like it would have been a very different story if she came out with that like not a not as an apology but just like if she came out with this statement of her frustration about like her having to turn something yeah, down yeah, yeah. before she tweeted fuck before yeah. she did all of like the dislikes like it would have been received very differently you know but i mean i'm a fan i don't so. know if it would be though <laughs> I, I think, think people yeah. some people are also just like so crazy yeah. mad and it's yeah. unreasonable yeah yeah, people yeah. Are like you are great blah 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 mm-hmm. and i mean i don't know if it's true but people are also like putting rumors out there about that she's difficult to work with and like now it's hard oh, because yeah. now Hunter she's Hunter. now she's just like no one's gonna know and everyone's right, just gonna talk because yeah. now it's just like out right. there it's worked up everyone's all worked it's up so unfortunate it though. is unfortunate like, yeah. because you know again that whole thing about women being difficult mm-hmm. and like what does that mean but yeah, yeah exactly. I think it will carry. I mean, the same thing that happened to um, Ke- Catherine, Catherine Heigl. Heigl. Like, no, as no, I mean, unfortunately, yeah, like it's sad that we have to, yeah. as women, um, have to be like, you know, hold our tongue. Um, but like, she's a lot for peop- women in in the industry in the entertainment industry. She, I mean, she's a she's a white woman. She yeah. wasn't immune to being back- blacklisted. Yeah, she yeah. had powers of be. She was working with Judd Apatow. She was, you know, with Chanda Rhimes. You know, she had had it good yeah and then she was talking smack <laughs> um and then got that got her booted and now she's doing like commercials or having her um she she still does tv but they get canceled right away and like it's <laughs> can you imagine shit. like someone yeah, who are hard. who like constant wo- woman of color you know that, uh, having to talk that to you know show their frustration like i wonder what it's going to be like for her after yeah. this experience yeah. because yeah, like, it's it's yeah. a different, you know, she's not a white woman. She can't hide behind that. Yeah. <laughs> um, as, you, know, you have, like, people like Christian Bale yelling yeah, she can, set, and he, I mean, I love get Christian Bale. It, yeah, I love Dustin that. Hoffman, you know, people literally <laughs> slapping people. Was that Dustin right. Hoffman who slapped yeah. Mail Street? You know what I mean? Like, people was literally, that, was it him? Was that and Kramer versus yeah. Kramer, we just, like, yeah, yeah, slapped yeah. her before a take. I mean, like, you know, like, Again, people like, get, yeah, do crazy yeah. shit, and that's wild. And yeah. then, of course, I'm like, that girl's not nice. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, this man is a genius <laughs> right, actor. Right, you know? exactly. I would love to work with Christian Bale. You know? like, <laughs> no shit. Yeah, you know And he mean? was just recently <laughs> nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for Vice. Vice. Yeah. And so he's yeah. well so deserved good. that nomination, I will say. <laughs> he he's transformed into yeah, Dick Cheney, really for sure. Does. I did not like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard to, like. I don't know. Make an opinion about someone, I feel like, and, like, stick with that opinion. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, we, we don't know anyone. Do. That's the hard thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's why, I don't know, then, uh, you know, when I daydream about when I'm famous one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that, you know, it, like, 
you you can't know anyone through the internet. Exactly. And so I don't know. For me, I'm always like, I can't. I my feeling is always like, I can't even try. You know, like, I just mm-hmm. know that like people aren't gonna get me. So I have this like apprehension of like sharing myself with the internet. I'm always just like feel weird about it. Yeah. And um, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Like, what? It, it's just like a weird new complicated place to be like when you get to that point and like how can you know being human and being messy and vulnerable like you inevitably will be and like trying to like navigate that weird line and that boundary between you and the people who support you and like it's it's really like messy and scary and like watching other people go through like I can't say I would do any better I mean I don't know it's really it's a really strange phenomenon that like other people didn't have to deal with and other you know, previous generations or times. How, and no one's like, you know, teaching this. There's no like mm. a course in like, you know, Twitter etiquette. <laughs> I feel like right. they should. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe. I took a social media class. Yeah. Or at least celebrities you should did? have a class. Well, yeah, yeah, well, uh, that's like a great idea. People should have to take it now. You did, Nicole? I, I, I'm i thinking about it, and maybe I didn't. I feel like it might have been a different <laughs> I think what? I signed up for it, and then I had to drop it. You got it. You're <laughs> like, this it. is dumb. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, because I was drink- thinking, did I learn anything from it? And I was like, wait, I didn't take it. That's well, like, what was, the, what was the, like, uh, how was it um, – describe like what were you going to study in the social media class it was going to be how to like market yourself on social media because it's mm. an mba course okay, okay you okay, could okay. take like some like extra credits with right. my lock program with mbas and um i took some other one that was like intercultural relations and um i actually wrote a paper about an incident with how i met your mother where mm. um it was like a whole yellow face episode mm. that they were trying what? to do s- yeah have I, I watched a lot of it I don't know. I don't know. I guess I didn't see it. or something. No. Okay. Oh. So it was their. I think it was their last season. I didn't watch. The and season. um, they decided to do this tribute to like ninja movies. Oh and my god. Oh my god. I I, 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 feel, I don't remember like what the metaphor was, but like basically all the characters were acting like different levels of like you know. I, I'm now of this level of understanding of martial arts and now you reach this one and this one whatever um, but they were legit doing like slanty <gasps> eyes oh my and, goodness like, hair. no it was like it was who a situation like, who was, people no one was there being like I don't know I, if this is a good idea I don't know what happened for the paper I wrote I had to act as if I was like CBS and like the, the steps they needed to take and yeah. like why it was such a misstep yeah and like talking about like the severe lack of representation in the media and then you're gonna do this like it was just so it was ridiculous I, it was like 2014 and i think yeah that was insane yeah Ooh. we're still learning everyone is still Everyone's learning, still learning. Yeah. everyone yeah. you know what i mean like that ashton kutcher clip like with of pop what? chips that was 2012 I, it's not long enough ago <laughs> that's really sad i don't know this one but i um, it was on the um indian on like a, a little montage of um indian characters on Master uh, of None. Yeah, on Master of None, they did it. Um, oh, why did I, the maybe episode. I didn't. I just didn't remember yeah, it. It's the beginning they, of the episode. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I also think it's like, okay, yeah, sure. we've seen all of this stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and we see a character here. We see an accent, or an accent here. And it's never, I mean, I guess like years ago, it wasn't as upsetting or offensive to viewers but then when you put them all together like in like 30 seconds of just one right after yeah. the other it's like whoa like, like how do terrible. we not realize yeah, like how bad. fucked up this is you know yeah. like Zach Morris was doing an Indian accent like I'd say by the I bell, love right? Zach Morris I know and if he's like what's yeah. going on Zach. yeah and but the writers on Saved by the Bell like who are you guys right. like I was just like why did you think that was cute you know, I don't know. we're learning yeah. we got a ways to go um, we are almost, we are at an hour, <laughs> so Whoops. we got to like Got into it. wrap Ooh. it up because, but there's just so much more to talk about. Um, uh, Nicole, you're leading you, like, the discussion, so <laughs> lead it, lead it. Okay, we got to, we got to wrap it up. Um, we saw Shoplifters. Yes. <laughs> Loved it. Um, why did you love it, Nicole? Why did I love it? I think it was a really thoughtful portrayal of this like created family in poverty and I really appreciate stories where like they talk about people in poverty and it's not like 
um, devaluing them as a person. I, I feel like there was so much dignity in their experience. They were trying so hard to like ensure that they were like the agents of their own actions and not like you know these facilitators in government or whatever but then you like start pe peeling back the layers and you learn so much more about like who these people are and like their issues and misdeeds and they're not so perfect and it's just like I, I thought it was such a thoughtful representation and I feel like a lot of times we get like caught up in the stereotype of like Asian wealth and prosperity and although that's like a, a real ass story there's also stories of people who are not who are Asian and are not doing well and struggling and they have to make the most of like having limited means so it was it's just really cool to see that represented in the film yeah what I really enjoyed um, or took away from watching this movie was because it's a Japanese film mm -hmm you know, a Japanese director, Japanese writer, Japanese actors uh, filmed in Japan, um, it just automatically, like, took away any possibility, not any possibility, but, like, the possibility of um, just having stereotypical Asian characters. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, okay, we're not Asians in America, yeah. like, trying to, like, say who we are mm -hmm. like you know what i mean and mm -hmm. so these we characters don't speak for everyone exactly mm -hmm. exactly that and they had depth they were going through things that had nothing to do with their ethnicity mm -hmm. it was oh my gosh like their performances were beautiful mm -hmm. like that the woman who played the mother oh, oh and my I, gosh oh my god excellent broke my heart yeah oh, i have to watch it it's so good it's on, it. hulu. it's on hulu i'll do it i'll watch it it's um yeah and I just want to also talk briefly about just like uh, people who are paving the way in the entertainment industry, like Karen Kusama, who is the director of Jennifer's Body I and that. Girl Fight. Did you love it? Isn't it fun? I mean, it's not my type of movie. <laughs> 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 That's but all Megan Fox, right? Yes. Megan okay. Fox. Yeah. yeah. It's because I don't really do like horror, right, right. like, you know horror adjacent but like i was actually much more into it than i thought and yeah. when i saw like the commercials for it back in what was it 2008 or seven I um i remember being intrigued more so than i would be with a regular film uh i think because of diablo cody um mm. oh, I, yeah. yes i love him that's a just, name i haven't heard in a while <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um yeah, uh the movie he just wrote with Char uh with um charlie theron theron I, I just watched I it. Know. It was so good. I'm sorry. That was tangent. Keep going. Young adult. No. No, the one that Ooh, I write that after down. It. Oh. Um, okay. Atomic Blonde. No, 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 no. It's like it's like in the same world as Young teacher. Adult. Mm. Oh. Isn't it Kindergarten Teacher? Nope. nope. Keep talking. I'm gonna find it. Okay. Tell us about. So what um, I was a huge fan of Juno, and I like their dialogue. It just feels very realistic, even though it's like made up. Like I, I just like that there's so much character that you can get from the dialogue. Like you. you can feel the depth of people's relationships because they have like their own jargon um so I, I like that style of writing and i appreciated that it was like a film about the like the two girls friendships more than anything else like right. it really wasn't about men at all mm -hmm. um and I, I was reading some articles about like uh you know an analyzing it um from its release then and how it's being perceived now uh, because it was not perceived critically well at all, and it, that's what pushed me to not wanting to see it then. Uh, I was like, oh, this is usually not a movie I would watch anyway, and it's getting really like bashed in the reviews. And after watching it, it did not deserve that level of criticism. Um, I think it was actually much deeper than you would have expected for that type of film, um, and there were like some symbolism that I appreciated. I, I, I felt like it did speak to like um, you know sexual assault, and um you know like the dynamics the politics that women can experience in relationships uh with other women so yeah some of the best movies i feel like have a cult following and like the, mm -hmm. the, the kind that need to you know settle in a little like mm -hmm. rocky horror like yeah like it just gets better yeah as we get better as a human race <laughs> anyways um also we're gonna close out with carrie fukunaga i love oh my god maniac was so good yes maniac it's also uh, mental health awareness month so 
Maniac is a great thing to watch on Netflix right now. It fucked me up. It's so good. It's so beautiful. Crazy. I haven't How? seen it. I it's, haven't either. It's yeah. a really <laughs> wonderful <laughs> portrayal <laughs> of like different worlds and be what's possible and it's like an actor's dream mm. and I think a writer yeah. and director's dream because like you can just do whatever you want and like you know reality you know it follows a lot of dream logic which is great and it's actually based on I th- this um, other series but it's just it's not actually parallel it's just mm. that was a starting off point and now it talks about mental health and it does. Ha- it sort of has a lot of. There's like it, this lives in this sort of like a new, f- the other future where there's also a lot of like Japanese influence. Where like mm-hmm. a lot of the characters are ja- Japanese and they speak, speak Japanese, and it's just great. And ex- he's doing a lot of really great things, and I'm really excited. Yeah. yeah. First season of True Blood is some of the best television I've ever seen. I love True yeah. Blood. I mean, not True Blood. <laughs> oh my true god. Blood. Yeah. Yeah. True, true Detective. Oh, JK. I love True Blood. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, he's a little young. To have <laughs> I, I know. I was like, which? Well, <laughs> no that's shame. another episode. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, One episode detective. just on vampires. Um, True Detective. True Detective. Also did Beasts of No Nation. Jane Eyre. I love Beasts of No Nation. I okay, haven't. Wa- I mean, I it's one of those things where it's like you know you got to be in a mood. You got to be ready. Can you handle it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw. I know. I know. I'm, that's what's gonna happen. Like I'm gonna yes. viscerally like lose it. But he also did Jane Eyre. Right. Yes. Wait, yes, he did. Asian directors doing like you know, period p- English period romances are amazing. Who, Teresa Navarro told me that because okay. she was telling me she, uh, like all these movies I should watch. Like, um, oh, let me. The one who did, uh, oh, he did another. There's another director, Ang Lee. Mm-hmm. Yes, Ang Lee. Sense and sensibility. Yes. So yeah. Like, uh, and she was telling me it's a lot, it's a, but it's very similar and it's really nice uh, because like you know that sort of like that uh, emotional suppression and that mm. self-denial of like personal desires and love and what you want and in, in accor- you know to follow like society standards and do what's right and like mm. what's good for like your you know standing in your social groups and status how like that's something that a lot of like people in Asian cultures can relate to so they tend to sort of like direct that well that's what Teresa told me and I was like oh that makes a lot of sense it does make a lot of sense I like that point shout out to Teresa Navarro shout out to Teresa Navarro and on that note I think we can we can all agree that you know all different perspectives and stories of how Asian Americans are portrayed are welcomed like but sometimes you know we do just want to do a romance English period piece like we want to talk about different things we want to experience different things than um sharing or like sharing our ethnicity and who we are but yeah there are films i'm sorry i know this might add more to the minute (laughs) 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 just (laughs) caught myself (laughs) there are films um out there who don't uh, exactly. Made by Asian American uh, AAPI um, <laughs> <laughs> people yeah. um, who are not necessarily about the race, and there's yeah. a lot of filmmakers, writers, actors out, out there that are not just the crazy rich Asians, right? Care, but, um, yeah, um, you know, and so it, you know, um, one of my favorite and uh, documentary films. There's a lot of um, AAPI people out there one of my favorite ones from last year was mining the gap um Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that doesn't necessarily have anything to do about um it was it's about skateboarding life in the midwest Mm -hmm. and underneath it all is um the the abuse that these um the the um the people his subjects um the director is asian american um and so they were facing the, um, child abuse or mm. dem- family abuse or whatever mm. um, what it was. Um, and it was one of the best documentary films that I've wow. seen. And it was nominated um, was. Um, an Oscar for best documentary um, ser- um, ser- feature. So I there is a lot of, it's yeah. just, people are just not aware. Exactly. That's what it is. It's the lack yeah. of also um, spotlight on, on these films. And I, I've yeah. been intentional about um, coming to see these um films because it's there's more than just crazy rich Asians exactly there. um exactly. there's more than Aziza sorry mm-hmm. um yeah. so and I just want people to know that yeah. and so it's not just this you know this bubble um, right you know For all sure. of it is important yeah yeah more more everyone, everyone is important yeah. yeah all these stories yes yes so 
We're going to close out. You want me to close it out? Close us out, girl. Uh, please follow us on social media uh, at Cinema Therapy Show. I'm at Nicole Sophia, with Sophia with a PH, and Karen is at KJ Pangantion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our guests. Thank you, Thank you for Sophia. having us. Um, Christina Bustos, where can we find you on social media? Um, at Chris, K R I S Bustos, B U S T O S. Perfect. And uh, my handle is at but actually B U T A C T U A L L E E. That's nice. cute. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, 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 Thank thanks, you, thanks. as always, to our director, Jay. Woo woo. Thank you, Jay. Thank, Thank you, guys. Crescent Radio. We will see you next see week. See you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.